There have been some bad movies that you've probably watched this year, and then there's a tier below that. That's my list. Let's talk about it. What's up, Flick fans? Welcome back to my channel. Today we are talking my worst movies of 2022. And you know what? If you haven't seen one movie in my top 10 or bottom 10, uh, you're probably better off for it. So congratulations, you won. And I get the same question every year, understandably so. Why are these the movies on your list? Why aren't there more well-known films? Well, that's because while there are bad blockbusters and there are bad movies that come out in theaters and are well-known, there are also films that come out and for some strange reason don't get talked about. Well, there is a reason, and this is why. But before we get into that list, I do want to talk about some well-known movies that I did not like and probably should be talked about on a bad list, and those movies include Halloween Ends, a massive disappointment, The Texas Chainsaw Massacre on Netflix, I did not like that one, Firestarter, yeah, that one fell flat for sure. Morbius, it wasn't. Morbin time. I'm actually going through the Apple TV Plus animated film on here. Luck, I just did not like that one at all. Deep Water, the Ben Affleck, Ana de Armas movie on Hulu. The Disney live action Pinocchio film, one of the worst Disney movies I've seen in years. Unfortunately, Moonfall. Did not like that. And how about some movies that just missed the cut for the top 10? We have Me Time on Netflix, not funny. Choose or Die, boy, I was just so disappointed. Senior Year, speaking of not funny, They Them. I believe this was on Peacock, Kevin Bacon, what are you doing? The King's Daughter, a movie like eight years in the making. And then The 355, remember that film that came out in January last year with all those stars? Well, yeah, nobody watched it. Coming in at number 10 on this list, we have Grim Cuddy, a horror movie that came out on Hulu? Maybe? I probably should have fact-checked this, but I don't want to. It's about this girl and her little brother who have to stop this internet meme, I kid you not, from being brought to life by the hysteria of their parents. So that idea is the idea that uh, kind of threw me off when I first read the premise. And as the movie progresses, we start to dive into all of these things that are supposed to be metaphors and, oh, memes are popular, and here's how this movie plays on that idea. But it also plays on the idea of people not willing to uh, believe in others and understand what is happening right in front of them. There, there are a lot of things, to be honest. I don't remember a lot of them. Uh, but the main thing about Grim Cuddy that I was so excited for was to see the monster, the creature design of this internet meme that comes to life and how, you know, in horror movies, usually you like to hold off on seeing the creature and utilize the idea of, oh, this could be really scary if we present it to the audience at the perfect time because when you're watching a horror movie and you don't actually know what's causing all of this chaos, usually that's scarier than seeing it, because once you see it, well, then you start to get used to it. Well, these filmmakers and screenwriters, that idea just wasn't really all that important to them, and when we see the Grim Cuddy creature at first from afar, I'm like, oh, that, that's actually pretty scary, but the closer you get to the creature design, the more I'm just sitting here like, oh, well, that doesn't look good, especially when it's in motion. It looks cheap, and I understand they were probably working on a budget. Uh, like I always say, nothing against the filmmakers here. It's awesome they got to make a movie. It's just a movie that I thought fell completely flat, and uh, it was going for things that it just couldn't quite capture. Next up, The Ice Age Adventures of Buck Wild. Why is this on my list? Well, I grew up with the Ice Age franchise. I thought uh, the first couple of movies were actually really sweet. There was a lot of heart there. The cast, obviously, was amazing. But then, as it progressed, you start to realize, oh, there's, there's more Ice Age movies than I actually thought. And then you get a film like this that's like a straight-to-Disney Plus release, and they're taking what used to be at least semi-interesting animation for the time, cheapening it, so it looks like they put no effort into the animation. The story, you feel the same way. It's one of the cheapest, most forgettable stories in an animated movie I've seen in so long. Simon Pegg is here as our main character of Buck Wild, but they're replacing the rest of the voice cast. And I'm getting that vibe of, oh, oh, it feels like those straight-to-DVD Disney sequels back in the day where they couldn't retain their cast, maybe one person, in this case it's Simon Pegg, and everyone else is like a cheap knockoff version, and so I couldn't get that out of my head while watching, but then the story is 
uninteresting. The dialogue is not good. How could you replace Josh Peck? He's an Oppenheimer. I'm biased because I love the first movie so much, and I understand this is a straight-to-Disney Plus release. While it shouldn't have been this, it shouldn't have been that, but it was. So it's on my list. Next up, we have Tall Girl. Too Tall, Too Furious. I like Ava Michelle in this film. She's charming. Griffin Gluck, I'm biased because I love him in other Netflix projects. American Vandal, why did they cancel that? Why are we still getting this? Uh, but Tall Girl was one of those films that's like, I watched it and, you know, what was... I get the point of this. I see what they're trying to do. Every idea, every theme, every moment, it just kind of falls flat because the thing about this movie is, well, she's tall. And that was kind of the theme of the first movie. People looked down on her and people looked up at her. And it's just kind of one of those things they just shunned. They shunned the idea that she was taller than them. And I see what they're trying to do. But then you get into a sequel that takes that idea and doesn't know what to do with it because we solved that problem from the first film. So this is basically just a movie about relationships and where those relationships go, how the relationships from the first work with the second, new people come in, love triangles, drama, tallness. But that's the thing. That's not really a theme of this movie. So the only point in continuing this franchise is because the writers and people involved thought we really wanted to see more of these relationships. I didn't really want to see more of these relationships. I watched it because I watch all the Netflix movies, and I thought this is one of the examples of when I say those Netflix teenage coming-of-age stories, they're just doing it too much. Well, I look at this film and say this may be the ultimate example of what not to do. Judd Apatow, a really good comedic director, a great comedic mind. I'm a huge fan of his movies up until this point. Some of them have fell flat, but none on the level of the bubble. Yeah, yeah, it probably has a little bit to do with the fact that it hits close to home because we're dealing with a bunch of actors who are quarantining on set. They can't come out of their rooms. This is right after the pandemic just happened, and uh, it, it's a star-studded cast, so you expect to laugh at the situations, to laugh at uh, kind of what they're going through on set, and then we'll see the actual movie that they are making at points. Like, when the film starts out, and you're like, oh, this is, this is pretty cool. It looks cheap, but it's supposed to look cheap. And the idea of these famous actors having to deal with the ramifications of COVID is great, especially when you have talent like Karen Gillan, Fred Armisen, Maria Bakalova, Keegan-Michael Key, Leslie Mann, Kate McKinnon, freaking Pedro Pascal. How is this movie possibly bad? It's not just bad. It was so unfunny. I was getting agitated while I was watching this. The situations that they find themselves in are ridiculous. Ridiculous, and not ridiculous in a way that reminds you of those classic Jim Carrey and Adam Sandler comedies, because those comedies are ridiculous. But you laugh, because of the comedic timing, because of the dialogue. Nothing about this movie screams interesting dialogue. And I understand why people say, oh, it's because it hits too close to home. Yeah, it does, but you can make those situations funny. Did you see the South Park special? It's possible. I've seen it done. So why is the bubble so bad? You have all of this talent. You have Judd Apatow. You just don't have the script. And you don't have the heart behind this movie. I felt such a, a, a lack of care regarding this material. And that's apparent all the way through. I was just, I was frustrated while watching The Bubble. So I grew up watching The Monsters with my grandfather, who did not watch a lot of television. It was like the Andy Griffith show, Christmas Story, and The Monsters. That's it. That's all he watched. But he loved that show, so I loved that show, right? So I was excited to see what Rob Zombie was going to do, but it's Rob Zombie. I'm like, oh, he's going he's to take this, he's going to make it crazy, outlandish, wild, and in a way... This movie was, and that's why this may be the most liked movie on this list. I have people on Letterboxd. They loved the experience. They thought it was funny. They thought it was quirky, wacky. I found this a hard movie to get through. Not only because the set design, it's colorful, but it looks really cheap. Uh, the makeup looks cheap. Everything about this movie looks cheap. But it's supposed to look and feel that way because it's supposed to feel exactly like the old television show. And it does in its own crazy way. I will say I haven't seen the black and white version, so maybe that could somewhat turn me around. But my issue, other than the cheapness of it all, is the fact that it tried its very best to capture what the original Munsters did. And in my opinion, 
by trying so hard, it almost had the opposite effect for me. It felt as if they just completely ruined and botched the source material. None of these characters were likable whatsoever, and that's such a shame because Herman Munster is a likable guy. Jeff Daniel Phillips is actually pretty good in this movie. Lily Munster, Sherry Moon Zombie, um, you know, there were some performances here. <laughs> That, that's another issue I have with the movie is some of the performances, the, the comedic timing when he's answering the phone and just, uh, ah, he's not good. Daniel Roebuck as the Count. Um, but Jeff Daniel Phillips as Herman Munster, he was really good, right? So, you know, there's maybe one or two redeeming things for me, but this is just, again, it's one of those movies I was just, why am I watching this? And it felt so long, I couldn't get through it. I was struggling. I was in pain. Alyssa Milano. Brazen. You watch these Netflix romantic drama mysteries and you're supposed to feel intrigued. You're supposed to feel a sense of, well, I don't know what's coming next. And uh, instead of making you feel that way and keeping you on your toes and keeping that intensity, this mystery romance drama focuses more on the spiciness but the romance between our main characters. And there is a mystery here. You have this writer, Grace Miller. She has to help try and solve her sister's murder. And we get these really emotional and heartfelt moments, moments where you're supposed to feel something. And it's not that Alyssa Milano's performance is bad. It's just the material that she was given. I just, I don't, I, I don't care. I don't care what's going on. I don't care about this main relationship. All of the twists and turns I saw coming. I've not seen a movie this year where I predicted literally every single thing. And that's not always the worst thing, as long as you're engaged, as long as you're intrigued. But this mystery is not mysterious. So if it's not a mystery, what is it? It's bland. At number four, the next 365 days. This is the third movie, just in case you forgot which one was which, because there were two that came out this year. We'll get into the one that's a, a tiny bit worse here in just a second. The only redeeming quality of the next 365 days is that there was less of an emphasis on the sex scenes and there's somewhat a little bit uh, of a plot a, a just a t just a sliver there's a there's a tiny bit going on there's a little bit i mean it's not without its pornographic music videos come on we all know that's why we tuned into this movie we don't want a plot who cares about engaging characters? Who cares about a well-constructed romance? Who cares about dialogue? I mean, there's dialogue in here, but you don't care. The, the performances, yeah, you know, at least they're committing to what they're being given. But I found this to be better than the second because at least there's a little bit going on. Whereas the next movie, or the one before, I, where are we at right now? At number three. Jeepers Creepers Reborn. I actually like some of the Jeepers Creepers movies. I think uh, they give you an interesting experience. They somewhat keep you on the edge of your seat. Some of the direction is at least sort of intriguing. And then you have this character in this movie that starts to experience these disturbing visions associated with the urban legend of the Creeper. And just from the opening scene of Jeepers Creepers Reborn, you immediately know the type of stupidity that you're in for. Uh, with this movie, and I, I mentioned a criticism with Grim Cuddy that they also use in Jeepers Creepers Reborn, and that's showing you things that they probably shouldn't have showed you, but they take that a step further in this movie and add absolutely nothing to the rest of the film. The acting is atrocious, the direction is lifeless, the imagery is unappealing, the relationship that is so focused on in this film between the main couple it's one of the most poorly written and just underwhelming relationships I've seen. We get an entire sequence of them uh, cosplaying with each other, and then they go to this dance club, and they say, where's Jeepers Creepers? What, what is this? I'm not watching. I don't care about this. It's horrible. The act, out of all the movies on this list, this is the worst acting of the year. By far, you can show me any movie you want to show me, and I will say, here's Jeepers Creepers Reborn. This one wins when it comes to worst acting of the year. I guarantee it. At number two, I, I just, I've, I'm over this list. It's, uh, what is this? 300, 365 days. Uh, this day. It's 365 days too. Uh, so remember what I said about the third 
365 days. There's a little, a little, a little sliver, a little tiny. Well, I guess there's that scene in this movie where they're on the golf course and she spreads her legs out and he's putting. <laughs> It's porn. Go to your Google. Go to go to Safari, and just 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 watch just watch it. Just watch. You can get it for free. You don't even have to pay for Netflix. There you go. I saved you however much Netflix is a month. You can get it for free. They, you don't need to. There's no point. You don't need to watch this. You can go watch it for free. And I get it. There's people who love these movies for that reason. That's fine. But I'm judging it as a movie. I'm not judging it as a. And you know what? At least the actors are committing to that. I appreciate it. At least I'm committing to watching these movies and watching this franchise. Because I'm going to keep watching it. I want to torture myself. <laughs> if, I, if I get mad at myself, I just put on these films. And it's great. Marmaduke. This is a masterpiece. Okay? If it had Owen Wilson, wow, like the live action movie did, it would be a, a, a 10 out of 10. Unfortunately... No Owen Wilson, so it's at the bottom of my 2022 list. Yeah, it's just, it could have been so much better with, wow, Owen Wilson. Instead, they chose Pete Davidson to voice. <laughs> wow. My wife's listening. Wow. Honey? Wow. Pete Davidson, J.K. Simmons, David Koechner, uh, Terry Douglas. It's, it's actually a really good cast. J.K. Simmons, what are you doing, buddy? What, what, what are you doing? I get it. It's a paycheck. I get it. Never mind, JK. Keep doing what you're doing, pal. I I hated I this it took me three days. I didn't review this movie because it took me three days just to watch it. And it's fairly short. It's it's not a long film. It's it's some of the worst animation I've ever seen. Some of the cheapest looking animation I've ever seen. It's almost like they intended on this being complete and utter garbage. It's like they were making this, and it's like they it's like they knew. They knew it was gonna be garbage. And it is. They successfully accomplished that task. It's absolutely tragic to watch. It's like watching a train wreck in slow motion. And you see the damage slowly accumulate. And each individual piece of the train is piling on top of the next. And by the time it's all over, you have Marmaduke. Or Marma Puke. <laughs> So that's it. That's the list. We're gonna uh, we're gonna focus on the good things because I I'll tell you what. The more I record this, the more it makes me go crazy. The next video on this channel, we're gonna be talking about the uh, 2023 most anticipated movies, my favorite TV shows of 2022. I have some Oscar predictions coming your way, some Golden Globes predictions coming your way, some Critics Choice Awards predictions coming. It's gonna be a stacked week, man. Uh, and Megan comes. Megan, Megan comes out. So we're going to stop talking about the bad stuff because it's, I don't, I just don't, I just don't want to talk about it anymore. It's just, just so, this movie's pretty good though. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for watching this video. Today's phrase of the day is not a phrase. It's, it's just a list. Leave me the worst movies you have seen uh, and let me know, did I miss a bad one? And I can promise you right now, I'm not going to watch it, but I'd love to know if I missed one. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you soon.